Look, I get it. You're thinking of moving. Many people are thinking of moving. There's so many homes going on and off the market pretty quickly. And Florida has been one of the hottest markets around. But before you move to Florida, I'd like to discuss with you some of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're moving to Florida. Coming at you next. Hey everybody, my name is Craig Cunha. I'm a real estate agent here in Southwest Florida. If you're looking for more information on what it's like to live, play, eat, sleep, and buy real estate on the Gulf Coast, then this is the channel for you. So go ahead and subscribe and maybe leave a comment down below about something you wanna know. I'm getting calls from people every day asking what it's like to move here, what they need to know, and I just love it. If you've got a question that I can help you with, you've got to call, text, or email because I've got your back when moving to the Gulf Coast. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the mistakes, some of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're moving to Florida. These are coming directly from questions from clients. These are coming from situations that have happened. I love these questions because it gives me all these answers to share with you because I'm pretty sure there's gonna be things on here you have heard before, but I'm almost certain there's gonna be a few that you haven't heard before. So it could be something that would answer a very important question for you. So stick around to the end and make sure you get them all. One of the biggest mistakes that people make, and this, this is super huge, is using information sources that are not reliable. Yes, everybody knows about Zillow and Redfin and Realtor.com, and they're great for looking at pretty pictures, but the timing on the listings is generally very off. The pricing they're sharing with you is off. Much of the data is a little bit skewed. So if you want accurate information, get with a licensed real estate agent. They have access to portals. Now these portals, what they do is they allow you to also build yourself a list. So when you're going to these areas, you'll have something to work with. But the nice thing about an MLS portal is that it's near live time information. It updates about every 15 minutes. So if you see something on there that's active, you're pretty sure that it's still active when you have interest in it. Something you really have to be careful about, and this is another huge mistake, and this, this goes with renting and buying, is Facebook Marketplace. There have been scams that have been run on properties that are vacant that people give deposits for and then end up losing it. So if you're going in on a property, whether it's a rental, whether it's a purchase, make sure you're dealing with professional resources, professional services, so that you don't end up getting burned like so many other people have already. Another big mistake is people choosing an area based on price. I know price is important, I get it. We all have a budget we have to stick to, but don't use that as such a huge part of the decision-making process. In most cases, if you buy something, you're gonna be there for a number of years. Do you wanna live somewhere second best? or do you wanna live in the place that you want to truly be in? So look at that budget closely, talk to a lender if you're gonna be getting a mortgage and look at your different options because there are different ways to structure a mortgage. Don't just rely on one source, try a couple of them. Many of them will work in different fashions and some lenders will actually put more time into that search to make sure you're getting what you need, not just what gets them the business. If you need help with that, Ask your real estate agent. We've always got resources of different lenders to use. This one is super important because of what the market is right now. You need to understand what's going on in the real estate market. You need to know what are the conditions. Do I have to ask full or do I have to give full price? Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, I've had that question so often. Can I come in lower? What can I offer on this? It depends. Do you want it or do you just want to put an offer in? There's so many different strategies. Many people do not exhaust all their options. Make sure you're working with somebody that is definitely an aggressive real estate agent, somebody that's going to push for you, somebody that's going to pick up the phone, ask questions, and not just rely on it, submitting an offer and telling the agents it's there. There have to be conversations had to make sure the information we're working with is accurate. The other thing that you need to consider in market conditions is the time on the market. These homes, the really good ones, they don't hang around very long at all. And you'll see in these charts that these time frames have come down to such a short amount of time before homes fly off the market that if you sit around waiting to decide, 
thinking about it, sleeping on it, you might end up just not having it. Another big mistake that people are making is they're coming in with certainty that they're either buying or renting. Well, you don't have to necessarily be so certain one way or the other. Renting does have its benefits. Does it suit your life? Is it a benefit to you? Buying is going to do a couple things for you. Number one, it's gonna lock in a price right now. So wherever this market's going, we don't know, but it's gonna lock your price in. It's gonna lock these super low rates in. We're still hanging around 3% right now. Who knows when they're gonna go somewhere else, how high they're gonna go. I doubt they're gonna go any lower. And if they fluctuate any lower, it's gonna be very moderate. So lock that stuff in, use a professional to guide you on location if that's what your hang up is. No good real estate agent is gonna put you in a bad area. Most of us would put you where we would put our family, our friends, and ourselves. So just trust the guidance. Make sure you're giving all the information you can about what you do in your life. What's your lifestyle like? What are the things you wanna be close to? What school systems you need to be near? And hopefully you can get into the buying bracket before the rental so that you can start investing your money and locking in these prices while you can. Now back on the rental part of it, yes, it's, it's a great thing, especially if you're coming in for a job and there's uncertainty with how long you're gonna be here for the job. Um, if you truly do not know where you wanna be and there's a broad net cast and you need to bounce around and spend some time, I get it. And some people are a little more cautious than others. So if you're one of those cautious people, don't worry about it, find the rental. Again, use a professional to help you so you don't get burned and get yourself down here, feel it, try it out, see where you wanna be and take that next step when you're ready. Now, if you are buying, you have to get pre-qualified. Biggest mistake you can make is not being pre-qualified. Many of the listings out there I'm starting to see now are saying send proof of pre-qualification or proof of funds if you wanna show the property. Are you kidding me? That never used to happen. First off, you have to think if it's your home, how many people do you want running through it? And we already know that if it's a really nice property, you're going to get dozens and dozens of people through there. So you wanna make sure they're qualified, right? So I understand why it's being done, but if you think that you're going to go just look at any home without a pre-qualification, that may not happen. And you're certainly not going to have an offer accepted without one. So if you're serious about purchasing, get the pre-qualification done. We've all got lenders down here that are local that know what they're doing. I've got a couple that I use. I give you a selection so that you can choose who you're comfortable with, but you, you should use somebody local so that they understand exactly what the timing of things are and what they're going to need to do to be successful in getting this home closed for you. Another big mistake is people are coming in sight unseen, never visiting the area. I have a process that I'd like to have all my clients follow and I'm gonna tell you, almost every one of them has told me, thank you so much for making us do this. So when you come into the area, I've already had your portal set up. So you're getting these listings, you're seeing live time and you're putting things into a category of favorites, possibles, or you're just tossing them in the garbage. When you finish this list, it gives you a direction to go when you get in town. So print this list out, write it down, whatever you're gonna do and then follow the addresses and look at the neighborhoods. See how close they are to schools, to shopping, to the beaches, to the airport, to the interstate, whatever the things are you want to be close to, find out what's around it. Because unfortunately, we don't have time to do that now as real estate agents. In many cases, our showings are only 15 minutes long just because there's so many people trying to get in there. And we have to coordinate 15 minutes at the house and then possibly a 20 minute drive to the next place and another 15 minute showing. So schedules are very tight. There isn't time to drive around neighborhoods. So that is something that I ask my clients to do and many of them have found it to be so beneficial. That direction that you get from doing this is going to make your purchase more successful. This one, <laughs> I just have to chuckle at. And this is not to slight a client. Most of my clients do this at one time or another, but it just reminded me because it happened so recently. When people shop by real estate signs hanging along the road. This is so time consuming. And in many cases, it does not get you any further along. You might think you're getting somewhere, but it really doesn't work that way. With how fast things are coming off the market, these real estate signs can stay out for six weeks, eight weeks. And in fact, there was a, a sign that a client shot for me the other day. It closed last mm, September, October and the sign still on the property. 
So don't rely on those signs. If anything, find an address nearby, send it to your real estate agent, let them look and see what's near it. But those signs in most cases are gonna be properties under contract, especially if they're nice ones. Another mistake is maybe not understanding completely how the construction is done in an area. I do get a lot of questions about floods and things like that here in our Cape Coral, Fort Myers area because we have so much water around us. So I get it, but that has already been handled. Our builders are fully aware of what they need to do. There's a FEMA map. In fact, my, my preferred builder, he goes a foot above what the FEMA map says the elevation should be for that area. So he's already bringing the home up higher. There's an additional thing that many builders are starting to do. It's, in, it's putting a stem wall under the home. So basically you go up a certain number of block and then you fill that in with the dirt, the piping and all that is well within there, obviously, but it's filled with dirt before the slab is poured. So now your home is elevated even further off the ground and taking you further out of the floodplain. So if you would have flood insurance, it would be very minor, if at all. Another thing about construction here is so many people are totally turned off to a wood frame home. And I get it, I kind of understand where you're coming from, but did you know most two-story homes in Southwest Florida are wood on the second floor? So in essence, if you have a two-story home, you have a wood frame home. So if you're one of those people that didn't want that, you ended up with it anyway. They just slapped stucco on the outside. Now think about this. These homes are still built to a standard. They still have to withstand certain winds. So it's not that the home is any less durable, it's just a mindset that's been pushed into people's heads that they don't want wood frame. So think about the type of construction, find out if it's something you're truly turned off to, or if it's something that you just heard from somebody and just put out of your mind that you don't even want to consider it. Another big thing that you have to consider, and I can't really call it a mistake unless you didn't think about where you're going to store your stuff. We don't have basements here. And while we do have attic space, you don't want your stuff in there. Things get very hot in the attics. Even when they put the reflective surface on the back of the sheathing, that's something that's come in in the last few years, it still is going to be one of the warmest places in the home. So if you have valuables or, eh, most people aren't gonna put valuables up there, but if you have something that you cherish, maybe even your decoration for Christmas, you just had them so many years and you just love them, you put them up there, you stand the risk of damaging them. So you either need to think about a bigger home that you could put more storage in, or use one of these dozens of storage facilities that are being built around the area. It's probably one of the biggest businesses we have going right now. Storage is everywhere. Every time you turn a corner, you see a storage building. In fact, it's happened so much that the city of Cape Coral said, hey guys, no more storage on the uh, frontage of Pine Island Road. There's just too much of it. Now they have to have some kind of a structure in front of it, like a plaza, to even be along Pine Island Road. There's right now 12 active permits, as of this month, 12 active permits for more storage on top of what's already there. It is getting crazy. So you'll have plenty of places to put your stuff. Uh, don't worry about that, but it is a consideration for the home if you want it nearby you or whether you wanna put it in one of these facilities. Now, Florida is very different. And one of the mistakes that I don't want you to make is thinking you have to pack all your stuff like appliances. Yeah, there's a lot of states out there in real estate that they don't get the appliances. Almost every single home that sells here, you'll get the appliances outside of maybe a washer dryer. But in most cases, you're getting all the appliances. Leave yours back home. It's less to carry. It's less for the movers to move. It's going to save you money and probably save you some time. Also, another thing to consider is, is the furniture that you're jamming in that truck, is it going to match your decor style here in Florida? I mean, I'm sure that big deer head that you have on the wall might not really fit in <laughs> with the palm trees that we have here. However, if it's something that you're proud of, then bring it. Anyway, you get the idea. Only bring the stuff that you really have to. Again, it's going to save you time and money with the move, and you'll be able to get stuff here that'll match all the colors and the brightness that you probably want to put in your Florida home. Another huge mistake is assuming that cash is always going to win in a deal because that's not the case anymore. There are structures and strategies that we've been able to use to overcome that. I've had finance deals where we've been successful beating out a cash deal because the way we structured the offer. This again comes back to picking up the phone, talking to the agent. I can get more information that way 
than just shooting an email with an offer. Now there's two conditions you can't get around. One of them is a seller that's just stuck on cash over financing. That's just what they want. The other one is the condition of the home. I don't know if you know this or not, but if the home is in a certain disrepair, you can't get financed. And one of the things we're seeing a lot of lately is older roofs. The insurance companies are now starting to only certify roofs that are 15 years and younger, where it used to be closer to the 20 year mark. We can't get that anymore. And I've heard as little as 10 years. With all these roof replacement replacements as of these last few years, insurance companies are starting to take a huge hit. So they're starting to change the policies on which roofs they will uh, insure. So make sure that you know what your insurance company is going to ask for and make sure when you're getting the inspection done that you get the wind mitigation, the four point done because those things will be needed to get the insurance policy. Another big mistake is assuming that well and septic is just not for you. I get it. I've lived on well and septic. I'm on water and sewer now. Yeah, I might have a small preference towards the water and sewer, but my preferred builder is kind of swaying me on this. And the reason behind it is, first of all, on well and septic, everything is basically without cost. Yes, you have some general maintenance, some general things that you, you do. Maybe you put some salt into the softener and things like that. You're going to have some expenses, but you're not going to have a monthly bill. And with these whole home reverse osmosis systems now, you are able to have water that is better than what the city gives you. So if you like to drink out of one of your faucets or the refrigerator or whatever other uh, system that you're using, when it comes through that reverse osmosis system, it's going to come through much more pure than it would if it comes from the city. Something to consider. Also, those well and septic homes are going to be lower priced generally, so you could get an even better value. Yes, I know the assessments are coming. I get it. Think about this. That price that you just paid for that house in the Southwest that had its assessments in, you just paid that much more to get that. So how important is it to really have that service in the water and sewer service if it's going to cost you more money anyway? It's no longer about the price because you're going to pay for it one way or the other. It's more about, is it something that you can tolerate? Especially knowing that the water quality could be even better. Another misconception. I need a pool because I'm moving to Florida. Okay. I get it. Yes. You might want the pool to cool off, but the air conditioning is probably going to be your better friend than your pool. The pool is going to require extra maintenance. It's going to cost more to get it and you're going to have monthly bills that will be much higher electric for the pump, a pool service to do the balancing of the water if you choose to go that direction, and just general maintenance and repair. However, it doesn't need to be on the home when you get here, you can add it. Whether you have equity in your home, whether you have cash on the side, whether you take out another loan, you can still put a pool on after the fact. So if you're not finding your ideal pool home in your search, take the pool out, find the house without it, and just adjust to have it done after. And since we're talking about building, another thing is assuming that building is going to be a hassle. It can be a hassle if you get too involved. And what I mean by that is if you want to know every single step and what's going on and put your eyes on it, need to see what's going on and asking questions at every stage, it's going to drive you nuts. And I get that too, because I built a home once and when they poured this slab, I walked up on the thing and I said, there is no way this square footage ho house is going to fit on this slab. This slab is just way too small. Well, as the construction process went, I started to see it. Things will never look right during the construction phases. It takes until you get further towards completion to really see what the product is going to be. So don't trouble yourself. Pick your colors, get all that stuff done up front. Let your real estate agent run out and do video updates for you if you really want to. Otherwise, just wait for construction to finish and pick up your brand new home, which is going to give you no maintenance for the next coming years. This is actually just like buying a resale property, only you don't have the maintenance concerns and you do have a warranty on the home. Why trouble yourself with what they're doing to get to the end and just let it happen. Since we're on the building topic, we're going to keep going and talk about lot considerations. This is another thing. Don't assume that you need one thing over the other. An example of that is the rear exposure of the home. Yes, everybody loves sunsets. Everybody wants to see that in their backyard. 
Did you think about how hot it gets when the sun sets? So is it really what you want? Or would you rather get the sun rise, get the same beautiful colors on the horizon, enjoy it with your coffee in the cooler temperatures? Yeah, could be a good balance, right? What about north versus south for a pool home? Well, yeah, south is preferred because when the sun goes further south in the wintertime, it's gonna stay on the pool longer. But did you know even on a north rear facing home that that exposure will still have sun on the majority of the pool throughout the day, especially if it's a one story home. There's not as much of a buffer with the roof height to cover the pool. You could also push the pool further back into the lot and give yourself more of deck space. That'll keep it in the sun longer. So consider all these things if you're choosing a lot. Then you have to look at some of the environmental things that come up. We're finding this out all the time. Mangroves now. If you have a mangrove on your golf access lot, it could take up to a year to get the, the permits and everything straight to get that finished before you can start the building process. Yeah, a year's a long time, I get it. There's also the uh, burrowing owls. And now we have gopher tortoises where they're also uh, an endangered animal. It's something we have to take into account when we're building. If they're on the lot, they too need to be moved just like the burrowing owls. So there are some things that could get in the way. If you're considering buying a lot and you're not gonna use it for a few years, all these things really aren't gonna play into it as such an importance. But if you're on a tight schedule, make sure that these aren't gonna be things that get in your way when you're discussing this with your real estate agent. And when you're choosing a lot or a home in a neighborhood, do not, another huge mistake, do not choose the house based on the neighbors whether they're good neighbors or bad neighbors based upon appearances, obviously. Uh, and when I say appearances, I mean, do they have a car up on blocks? Do they have a, a lawn with uh, the grass up to their knees? Those things can change tomorrow. So your neighbor that's there, that's taking care of the house beautifully and it looks amazing, that could change too. So base this upon location for you, the house, what it offers you, and yes, you want to choose a neighborhood that's rel relatively nice as a whole, um, that most of the homes are in good repair and taken care of and have great maintenance, but don't make that solely your consideration. Well, that's a little bit about the mistakes that people are making when they're moving to Florida. And if you've learned anything in this video and you want to know more about other parts of our area and other considerations you need to be putting into your thought process, check out one of these other two videos. And again, if you have any questions that I can help you with, you've got to call, text, or email because I've got your back when moving to the Gulf Coast.